Alright guys, real quick before we jump into the video, I just want to say that this is 100% personal opinion. Please, do, I say it at the end of the video, but please do not argue with people in the comments. Just because you think something doesn't mean it's right. Does Just because someone else thinks something doesn't mean they're right. This The, the control thing is a thousand percent personal opinion. I give my full personal opinion, but I do understand everyone's opinion in, in why they may not like certain things. And I do give you guys some things that maybe I'm not a big fan on and some things that, you know, I understand why a lot of players wouldn't like them. But I give my full opinion, you know, full respect to everyone if you completely disagree with me. But like I said, just, you know, approach like an adult. For some reason, whenever people give opinions when it comes to things like this, it seems to be something that's argued. You're not right. I'm not right. This guy's not right. This guy's not right. It's just an opinion. And some things will go better for other people. Some things people won't like. But let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video and today we are talking about esports sports stuff and more specifically the fight controls that they show us from the gameplay trailer at the end of July. I'm not sure when this video will be uploaded, I might be away if it's between like the 3rd and 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th of August I think. I'm away at that time so I apologise um, if I don't reply to any comments. Now today we're going to be looking at the fight controls that they show us and for that I will be flexing the Cosmic Red PlayStation 5 controller. And I've seen a few people talk about it. I've not watched any videos on the fight controls. I've only maybe seen actually someone talk about it briefly. Um, but a lot of the complaints I've seen seems to be somewhat, and no disrespect, somewhat boomer complaints. Things like, you can't press these buttons together quick enough. Yes, you can. So I'm going to be going through and I'll give my honest opinion. Alright, so let me shrink myself down so you guys can see both the controls and me, and let's get into it. As you see on screen here, we've got all the, we've got the controller layout, it is on Xbox, but obviously we're doing it on PlayStation. Uh, on the bottom right, we've got right stick punch control, and then on the left, we've got fight controls, which will be um, buttons and such. And one thing I just want to point out really quick, is people seem to be thinking, if you use the buttons, you're going to be limited by the uh, square and X uh, uppercut, and the triangle and circle uppercut. One thing to remember is you could go jab straight uppercut. You don't have to do this. You could, you can do this. You could go straight hook, uppercut. You don't have to just use these or just use these. You can mix it up as C fits. For me personally, in Finite Champion, for example, while it's not a game that I love, I use the buttons for for jab, for, sorry, for jab, straight, right hook, left hook, and then I use these for uppercuts because it just flows nicer when you do jab, jab, straight, uppercut. You can just flick it down instead of having to hold these because even in UFC I'm not a huge fan of these but it does make sense of those that prefer to use buttons. Now one thing I will point out right away when we talk about the basic shots jab straight and hooks and uppercuts and stuff is in the other final games I didn't like that some of them would make you do this motion when throwing hooks and uppercuts. I like that it is a left to right motion for hooks and a sl and diagonal left and right downwards for jab um, for hooks uh, and upper, uppercut, sorry, and then for jabs and straights, it is upwards like that, which I just think is brilliant. I think it's a, a simple way to keep it, and I, I'm glad that they kept the controls when it comes to the stick very simple. Now we go on the left side, we see a bit more advanced stuff. Like I said, I spoke about the uppercuts where it's just these ones, which I get. And then we go on to weave movement, which is L2 and left stick, which works well. That'll be all of, you know, kind of that movement, the rolls and the pullbacks. So, you know, you'll be able to, you know, pull back, bang and snap off shots as you see fit, you know. So it will, it will work brilliantly. You'll just be able to pull back and, and snap it. The reason I, you guys may wonder why I'm doing a lot of this as jab and this as straight is because I normally fight in southpaw in most fighting games. I'm southpaw in real life. So for me on the screen, it is jab is here and straight is here for me i usually use southpaw fires so for me it's jab straight that's just the, the just for clear it up really quick and we go on to the block movement which is r2 and the right stick so when playing you'll have no issue just moving around and and mixing up like that even with the weave you can do them all together at once then we go on to the slip which is click in l3 and use it like that i saw people saying that's going to be hard it's not hard at all because you could even click and push up. I don't... So I didn't see the issue with that. I didn't really... I couldn't really get on board with people saying that that could be an issue. I saw people saying about controller wear and tear. But you do click and push when you play Call of Duty. You do click and push when you play most shooter games. You... Yes, for fighting games, you might not use the sticks as much. Especially not clicking it in. But for most games, L3 and click is, is used h highly... In, in most games, people seem to forget that we do play other games. Even in House Flipper, L3 and Push Forward is, is Sprint. It, it's not something that isn't used often, which really confused me. 
So for me, you know, I'm only going to really be slipping side to side and maybe pulling back, which would be... I'm not going to be slipping diagonal, really. I'm not going to... Unless maybe I'm, I'm kind of going... F I don't know. Am I going to need... Maybe not. But for me, the slip, I don't really see too much of an issue. Yes, for some people, it may be a bit of a strain because you do have to push it in. But these days, in a lot of games, when you click L3, it activates it even if you click it and release it. It tends to be when you... It tends to be like you, you click and push forward. You're not going to have to keep that pressure on the whole time. You you can click and push forward, click and push back. And yeah, I suppose, you know, but if, if you want to slip, 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 like people might say, then yeah, you can hold it in and do that. And it's really easy. It's not a difficult thing to do at all. I mean, you've got to add a bit of pressure, which I understand that some people may not want to do that. But that's not... That's the only issue I would really have personally is the fact that that could be annoying to some people. However, taking that into consideration... Every other button is used up quite significantly. It's not like they can expect you to go left on the D-pad and go into slip mode, right on the D-pad to go into weave mode, down on the D-pad to go back into fight mode. That wouldn't be fair on anybody. That would slow the game down, the game's momentum, hugely. And then we go on to uh, L3 and R3, which is just clinch, which I like. It's simple, uh, keeps things, you know, yeah. Is it easy? Not going to get confused of anything because there's no like click L3 and move R3. No, it would just be like that. Worst case scenario, you you accidentally slip and clinch at the same time. So you might slip a shot and clinch, which would work really well anyways, which people will probably end up trying to do regardless. Now, if we go up to the actual controller, we looked at block. Obviously, then we've got R1 as the power punch modifier. We're getting onto that soon. The weave is there. The body punch modifier is movement. And so you've got movement and then loose movement is, is the D-pad. Now, if you play like this all the time, then I understand it being a bit of an issue. But for someone who holds the D-pad like this, so I use this finger. If you're always like this, then yes, you're, you know, you're going to struggle to actually find a way to, to use the loose movement correctly. But for me, I do this and this. So I'll be able to use loose movement, hold L2 if need be, and move like that. And I don't feel that as a strain at all. I, I'm quite happy. I've played like that for years. I don't really have an issue with that at all. And one thing that a lot of people have pointed out already, which is brilliant, is the body punch modifier and the weave is two different buttons. So we could weave back and we could just throw shots how we see fit. Like if we want to go to the head, we don't need to worry about it. And then if we want to, we can do... Um, body punch modifier at the same time or we can just drop down and then move back which will be really nice for those those kind of tight hooks that um, Canelo does when he kind of uses that lead arm to reach out where he doesn't drop his whole body weight down to throw hooks like you know Fight Night and UFC and stuff so that would be really nice to be able to body punch and not have to drop our whole body weight so we can weave as necessary and we can obviously weave the worst thing I hate is in Fight Night Champion when you're weaving and you see an open shot to the head and your, your fighter throws it to the body because obviously you're already in that body shot slash weave button holding so that is obviously definitely an issue the loose movement i have no real issue with i like it on the d-pad to be honest they couldn't do it any other way you got to think of what's being used i would say for loose movement would be l3 in that but then that's going to be even more pressure on on the stick personally and slip is obviously already click and move so that is an issue so for me loose movement is fine let's be honest loose movement is only going to be for showboating you're not going to be using loose movement in a very close contested match because you would get fucking knocked out. So people moaning about loose movement, you're not going to be using it as much as you want. It's just going to be showboating, you know. And if you play like that, you can move quite freely however you want. Like, I'm not having an issue with it at all. I can do that. I can even do that one, which I'm not going to need. I'm not going to need to body punch loose movement. I can, but I won't need to. So, you know. Now we go on to power power punch modifier. Obviously, we hold R1 for that, and we will, you know, power punch in either, and obviously you can power punch with any of this. Now, one punch that is obviously missing the most basic punch when it comes to power punches is overhand. So for me, I would lay it out the same as, you believe it or not, UFC 4, and that is the jab and straight. Once you hold the power modifier, that turns to the overhand. That just makes sense. I don't think there should be any things like you tap it for a heavy jab and you hold it for an overhand. I like quick responsiveness with my fights. I don't want to be able to, I don't want to have to hold to induce an overhand. I want to be able to do this and I throw an overhand. I want to be able to do this and throw an overhand. I want to be able to release R1 and do this for a jab, do this for a straight. I don't want to have to hold everything to throw an overhand, especially if I'm if I'm putting combinations together very nicely. It just makes sense. 
Now, obviously there will be people that moan about how power punch modifiers will not flow as well with if you're throwing strikes. Now for me that just makes no sense. Now let's say I want, I'm obviously in southpaw for example, so my triangle will be my jab. So let's say I want to go jab, straight, hook, left overhand, right? It is as simple as, it's not a series of tough buttons. I see people saying it's going to be really hard to do this, but you, no one does this. I'm just, no, who does, who puts this much effort into pressing buttons? Your fingers should be here, so you should go jab, straight, hook, jab, straight, hook. Like that, it shouldn't be like you You have to really, I don't get that. So yes, I get that perhaps the punch modifier, the power button modifier may slow things down. But in real life, if, if you really want to talk a hook, you can't just do it this close. You have to really talk it anyways and it slows the combinations down regardless. So it makes sense if you have to have that split second delay to do that. It just makes sense. And yes, obviously, it's tough when you're not playing the game. Because I can't, obviously, quickly, you know, like, navigate. It's tough even when I do this as well, to be honest. You know, because normally I'm down here with my controller. So, like, if I'm if I'm doing it like this, I'm absolutely fine right now. I'm having no issues with it. Like, second I release that right hook, I know to press... I know to press that. So, I boom, 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 boom. I know to press... The R1, the second I release that hook. And am I going to throw the jab, straight, hook, power, overhand that often? Of course not. The overhand is something I'm only going to use once in a blue moon when I see the opening. I'm not going to be throwing power hooks like a madman. I'm not going to be throwing power uppercuts like a madman. I don't feel... I will never feel the need to do that. I will be much more controlled as you would in a real fight. You wouldn't go into a real fight and just start throwing power hooks. Throwing really talked uppercuts. You wouldn't start throwing overhands like a madman. How often do you actually see an overhand thrown. Most recent notable one I can think of was Billiam Smith um, versus, was it Tommy McCarthy in the fight camp one. First round, McCarthy caught him with a big overhand, rocked him, fine. Other than that, the only other overhand I can think of off the top of my head of recent times is Devin Haney's knockout where he threw an overhand and that was a big talked overhand, clean on the chin, out cold. But he hadn't thrown that 45 times in the fight prior. So for me, there is not a combination that I cannot put together quickly. Like I said, if I wanted to go jab, straight, hook, uppercut, I would do it like that. If I wanted to go, uh, I don't know, what straight, right hook, jab, jab, left hook, uppercut, I would do it like that. There's not, I don't really, and this is without playing the game. I don't see an issue with any of it. Like I said, the slip, I get that some people may have an issue with. I completely get that because that's a lot of pressure constantly on the thumb to move. I get that. For me, I can just click it and move it like that. And there's no... The only bumps you can hear are me hitting the edges. Are you not hearing this constant click? Or you just click it and push it forward. Click it and push it back. I don't know. Maybe, we, maybe we'll, we'll vary in opinion. Maybe when the game comes out, I will change my opinion. I don't know. But as of right now, I think the controls will flow nicely. I can see it. Block and weave work well together. Block and body monitor, fire punch work well together. Block and power punch even works well together. Weave, body, block all works well together. Like I said, the only thing I would understand people not liking is loose movement being on the D-pad. But that will be because we don't use it often. How You're not going to go into a fight and be like this the whole time. You're not going to be using like this the whole time. It's a taunt at the end of the day. That's the reason it's on a D-pad. Because it's not there that often. Loose is very taunt based. You know, Linnarf had his hands behind his back. You're not going to do that in the 12th round of a fight when you're you're when going to the 11th. It was it was fucking five five. You're, you're not going to do that in a close fight. The loose movement will be something that isn't used as often. We're probably the least used thing in all honesty. Besides maybe the clinch will be the second useless tool on the controls. Today there is no way of having perfect controls. Everyone's opinions will vary, and exactly the reason why Call of Duty back in the day had things like this was to knife or this was to knife. This is to aim or this is to aim. This is to shoot or this is to shoot. Grenade, 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 grenade. Whatever you can have it however you want. Maybe we can recap it. People with the scuff things on the back, the paddles, they use the paddles. If you try to get me to use paddles, I'll actually pass out because I'll be so confused. I won't know what's going on. I try to use it once, never again. Never again. But yeah, I am so confident in any game when I have my controller in my hand. But yeah, the paddles made me feel like I was 100 years old. I could not use them. The only other thing I'm not a fan on, but I get why they've done it, is the 
uppercuts. Now, the reason I don't like them is because I don't like them in any game. I just don't. I hate them in literally every single game, which is why I use the right stick for uppercuts, and I use the the uh, the, uh, the buttons for jab, straight, left hook, and right hook. It just makes sense for me. I, I don't really enjoy any other... I don't like that uppercut. It tends to me that my thumb tends to go at an angle, so I tend to throw the wrong shot. Whereas this, I feel much more confident doing it because I can flick it slightly down to the left and slightly down to the right, and my uppercut will always go exactly where I want it. So I have real no issue with that. I love the block. I love the weave where it is. I love the fact that the body and weave are different. Power punch, I love it. Like I said, the only issue I have is uppercuts, but I don't like it in any game. The slips, I could see why people would find an issue. And loose movement is something you're not going to use often. Same as the power punch, power punch modifier, you're not going to be using it often. So for me, that's all the controls. I'm not going to go into detail with the, when they spoke about the 42 punches per fighter. Because that could be such things as marquee punches like Canelo has with his body shot. So we don't know. But as of right now, I would say if there's an overhand, we definitely go power punch, jab and straight. That just makes sense. Uh, and then obviously, you know, power power hook, power, power uppercut, whatever you choose to call it. Um, I'm sure there'll be certain things like maybe loose movement, push forward, power punch, hook will be Joe Frazier's um, gazelle, leaping gazelle punch, whatever the fuck it's called. Thinking like that, how will those punches be pulled off? We don't know yet. But I would imagine it's something to do with loose movement and we do this. And that's not difficult to pull off. I'm sorry. It's not. I could be, you know, like, I could be moving around, slip, slip. You know, I could be moving around. And then, like I said, obviously, I've got to try and remember the controls. It's tough when you don't actually play the game. And then, you know, you could just, you know, move around, throw in a few shots, you know, step and back, loose movement, bang. And then you're throwing the, and you, you go and throw the big gazelle punch with Joe Frazier. I don't know how it'll work. But for me... I really like the controls, and like I said, my only issue would be the slips for some players out there that maybe don't want to have that constant pressure on that thumb all the time, which I do understand. But, you know, if you play Gears of Call of Duty, you're used to all Battlefield. If you're not much of a, I don't drive vehicles in Battlefield, so I'm always sprinting around the map. So for me, this is no issue. And yes, nowadays you can click and push forward, and the game will run for you. But I'm so used to it from back in the day where you have to click and push forward. I'm so used to it now that I can just hold it like that for, for ages. So it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, the rest of the controls I really like. But, you know, that's my thoughts on the controls, guys. Um, we'll have to see what comes of the 42 punches with marquee fighters and stuff. Uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. There are a few shots that I'm intrigued to know. The, um, you know, obviously, like I said, with Canelo's kind of that, that hook uppercut that he throws to the body. I, I would like to know more about those kind of punches. I know not everybody throws them, but I'd like to know more about them. You know, Gennady, where he throws his his kind of hooks, but he puts it over the guard like that. It's not a big overhand like that. It's kind of over the guard, the way he, he's very aggressive with it and throws it over the guard. I, I want to I see more about that. Um, if, if You know, he's not in the game, I know, but maybe, you know, I know he's kind of the, really the only one that throws that kind of shot, but I'd like to see more of that in the future. Um, and yeah, so signature shots, like I said, the, Gunnell, uh, the, 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 the gazelle punch, sorry. Or the gazelle hook, you know what I mean? Um, I'd like to see more of that. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I really like it, to be honest. I have real no issues with it. At the end of the day, I will pick it up. If I don't like it, I will find a way to navigate around it. Like I said, I'm most likely going to use these four for the most basic shots. These for the uppercuts. Jab modifier. Uh, power modifier, sorry, will literally be for the overhands. I'm not really a power uppercut guy or, or uh, at all. Maybe a power hook from time to time, but I'm not a power uppercut guy in any game. I don't ever feel the need to throw heavy uppercuts. Uppercuts are a dangerous enough shot. I don't feel the need to put an extra bit of mustard on it. You know, but I'm excited, man. Especially with the blocking system, being able to move it free like that. And, I, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to people saying it's wear and tear on your sticks, it's going to be. We're playing consoles. It's going to be. People are saying about this is wear and tear. Surely, if you're in a defensive 12 round fight, this is going to burn your down. I mean, I've got a PS2 controller right there that I can't obviously get because the wire is quite tight. The top of the top of this plastic bit is burnt down from all of this. Like back in the WWE days, you would do this with your controllers and it would it would is what it is, man. Like, come on. The controllers die at the end of the day. I went through like eight PlayStation 4 controllers. PlayStation 5 has been fine with me. PlayStation 3 was fine unless I bashed it against a wall or a desk from back in the day from, from Call of Duty Rage. Other than that, I never had any issues with the controls. Um, ever, honestly. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But like I said, I've lost more controllers to Call of Duty than I have to a fighting game. And, you know, 
at the end of the day, there's going to be lots of stick movements because there's so much defensive style, there's so much head movement in this game. But for me, the controls are fine. I get if maybe you're an older player and maybe you don't like the idea of the loose movement being there and full punch control, you don't like the slips, I get it. But unfortunately, just like I'm not the only one playing the game, you're not the only one playing the game, you'll have to work, find a way to navigate around it. And maybe you, maybe you, you know, people find a way to just focus on weave movement or you find a way to focus on slips, but there's no, the controller is so used up on this game because there's so much to it. What else can you add? You can't, you can't put it anywhere unless, like I said, you want, you want loose movement here and then you want the left on the D-pad to be slips, which I'd be okay with because that's easy to press. But for some people, that's not going to be easy to press, especially if you're on Xbox because you've got the stick up here. So you'd have to use the stick with this and use the D-pad so the stick will be up here and the D-pad here. But I'm going off PlayStation, so... You know, I'll always play on PlayStation. If I go on PC, I'll put a PlayStation controller in. If I play on Xbox, I'll put a PlayStation controller in. So, I'm not too bothered. Um, but anyways, thanks always for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the controllers in the comments down below. Um, like I said, I, I respect everyone's opinion on this because it is 100% personal preference. Um, you know, I, I, I am not always... I'm not right with this. You're not right with this. It's just personal preference in the, the day. For me, I think it's fine. My only issue, like I said, is the slip and uppercuts because I hate uppercuts in all games with the buttons, two buttons at a time. But it does make sense. I, I understand that. It does make sense. But I'm not a fan on the uppercuts being those buttons. I use the sticks for uppercuts and the buttons for all other combinations. But... And that flows well for me, man. I'm Like I said, I'm, I'm quick enough to be able to... To, to put it all to put it all together, you know, so it doesn't really bother me even if I do it like this where, where I, I, I do that You know, like I'm quite happy where I can use this knuckle to push on the buttons But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below like I said, it's all personal opinion You know, don't be disagreeing with people because it's just because you prefer it doesn't mean someone else will um, But anyways, thanks always for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace